Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome back again to our ongoing series on the glories of our beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamaniti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pashtacha Deshatarane All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> so, we're continuing with our mini-series on Stimulation for Ecstatic Love, and this will be part 65. As you may remember, last week we discussed the role of poetry in helping us to uh, reawaken our love for the divine couple, Shishi Radha and Krishna, and to serve them eternally in their transcendental abode of Sri Vrindavan Dham. That that is the very goal of our lives, is made clear in the following poetic shloka by Hari Parshad Das. It's entitled, A Prayer for Eternal Residence. <clears throat> Those individuals who are fully engaged in carrying out various karmas prescribed by the Vedas, etc. Those who are extremely desirous of understanding the impersonal Brahman. Those whose minds show eagerness in attaining the happiness of Vaikuntha, as well as those who delight in Dwarka, etc., may all these individuals attain their respective cherished goals. What difference does it make to me? O Sri Rupa, in close proximity to you, may the banks of Sri Radhakund become my beautiful, eternal place of residence. Hare Krishna. So today, I would like to continue exploring the theme of transcendental divine poetry. <clears throat> so important is it that Sri Krishna describes himself as such poetry in his Bhagavad Gita, 1035. Brihat sama tata sam nam, gayatri chanda sam aham, masa nam marga shisho ham, ritu nam kushu makara famous verse. Of the hymns in the Samveda, I am the Brihat Sama. And of poetry, I am the Gayatri. Of months, I am Marga Shirsha, November, December. And of seasons, I am flower bearing spring. Flower bearing spring. <clears throat> it's important to note, as we did in last week's lecture, that when we speak of poetry, we are not referring to mundane poetry. Again, poetry which describes the affairs of this world, but rather poetry that glorifies the name, fame, pastimes, and paraphernalia of the Lord. Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami writes in Chaitanya Charitamrita Antya 5107, Gramya Kavira Ka Vitva Sunite Haya Dukha Vidagna Atmiya Gakya Shunite Haya Shuka. Hearing the poetry of a person who has no transcendental knowledge and who writes about the relationships between man and woman simply causes uh, unhappiness. Whereas hearing the words of a devotee fully absorbed in ecstatic love causes great happiness. Srila Prabhupada explained that, for example, when Lord Chaitanya was residing in Jagannath Puri, Many poets used to come to see him and offer their different kinds of, of poetry. But the regulation was that um, Lord Chaitanya's secretary, Srup Damodar Goswami, he had to first examine all of these, these writings. And if he found there was uh, no mistakes in describing the loving affairs of Krishna, then only would he allow the poets to approach Lord Chaitanya and recite their poetry. So again, Poetry, in the ultimate sense, is meant to instill uh, f uh, or awaken feelings of love for Krishna. And therefore, it can only really be written by devotees of the Lord. Now, last week we mentioned how Sridhar Prabhupada was an, himself uh, an accomplished poet. Actually, I was reading that when he was in the Gaudiya Moth, he was actually recognized as such. In a letter to Rameshwar Prabhu on December 3rd, 1975, Srila Prabhupada wrote, My dear Rameshwar Prabhu, please accept my blessings 
I am in receipt of your very encouraging letter dated November 27th, 1975. Your reported book sales is very encouraging. You are all becoming very, very dear to my Guru Maharaj. I started this movement by book selling. I was never a beggar for money, but I was writing books and selling. My Guru Maharaj very much liked my writing and he used to show others in my absence. He said, just see how nicely he has written. He encouraged me and my godbrothers. They also liked my writing. After I wrote that poem for Vyasa Puja of my Guru Maharaj, they used to call me a poet. <laughs> they used to call me a poet. And Sridhar Prabhupada wanted us, his disciples and his followers, to be poets as well. In a letter to Mukunda Das on July 28th, 1969, Sridhar Prabhupada wrote, I am so glad to learn that Mr. Ted Burke, the American poet, is now living with you as a brahmachari. Let him become now a Vaishnava poet. There are so many Vaishnava poets in India. Now as Krishna consciousness is spreading, I think there must be some Western Vaishnava poets. And Mr. Ted Burke may be the first one. Hare Krishna. So we should try our hand, all of us, in, in, in writing poetry. And in doing so, we can take inspiration from a number of great poets in our line. And there's no secret you know, who some of them are. To begin with, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj makes it very clear who some of, there are, some of them are in the following verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 10, uh, 1.15 Vidyapati Chandidas Shigit Govinda Edina Gite Karana Prabhura Ananda Shri Swarup Damodar used to read the poems of Vidyapati and Chandidas and Jayadev Goswami's Git Govinda. He used to make Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very happy by singing these songs. He used to make Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very happy by singing these songs. And in Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 2.77, Kaviraj Goswami, Goswami says something very similar. Chantidas Vidyapati, Rayera Nataka Giti, Karanrita Shi Git Govinda, Shrub Ramananda Shane, Mahaprabhu Rati Dhine, Gaya Sune Parama Ananda. He also passed his time reading the books and singing the songs of Chantidas and Vidyapati and listening to quotations from the Jagannath Balabha Nataka, Krishna, Karnamrita, and Gita Govinda. Thus, in the association of Swarup Damodar and Rai Ramananda, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu passed his days and nights chanting and hearing with great pleasure. So some great poets are mentioned there too, and we can be inspired by them. Of course, as many devotees know, the poetry of Chandidas and Vidyapati and Jayadev Goswami, it's more often than not very intimate, very confidential, and is therefore meant really for only very advanced devotees. In a conversation with Dr. Shaligam Shukla on July 5th, 1976 in Washington, D.C., Sridhar Prabhupada said, Vidyapati's writing is meant for realized souls, not ordinary. Ordinary they will take as love affairs between uh, girls and, and boys. Therefore, it is not for them. Those who are already advanced, liberated, then these love affairs of Radha and Krishna, they will be discussed in detail. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to discuss Jayadev's books, Vidyapati's books, very confidentially amongst a few devotees, not publicly. However, I was thinking that not all of Vidyapati's songs are of a confidential nature. He also wrote some you know, basic truths in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> How do we know? Because Prabhupada said so. <laughs> Prabhupada writes in the purport to Srimad Bhagavatam 4.25.12. Uh, he writes as follows. Srila Vidyapati, a great Vaishnav poet, has sung Tatala Shakite Vari Bindu Shama 
Shuta Mita Ramani Samaje. Material sense gratification with society, friendship, and love is compared to a drop of water falling on a desert. A desert requires oceans of water to satisfy it. And if only a drop of water is supplied, what is the use? Similarly, the living entity is part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who, as stated in Vedanta Sutra, is Anandamayo Biasat, full of enjoyment. Being part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the living entity is also seeking complete enjoyment. However, complete enjoyment cannot be achieved separately from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So that's something about Vidyapati, that he also wrote some, you know, tattva, some basic truths. So we can take inspiration from some of the songs of Vidyapati. I, I saw a few, talking about Radha and Krishna, but in a very nice way, simple way. Or we can take uh, inspiration simply from his life, his exemplary life. I was reading that Vidyapati was born in or around uh, 1352 in Bihar, India. And his most enduring literary con contribution is recognized, actually, as a body of over 500 poems sung as songs composed between 1380 and 1406 about Radha and Krishna. Surprisingly, Vidyapati himself was not a Krishna devotee, <laughs> actually. He was a, a devotee of Krishna's greatest devotee, Lord Shiva. Nimna ganam yata ganga devanam achuto yata vaishnavana yata sambhu puranam idam tata just as the Ganges is the greatest of all rivers, Lord Achuta, the supreme amongst deities, and Lord Sambhu, Shiva, the greatest of Vaishnavas, so Srimad Bhagavatam is the greatest of all Puranas. So Shiva. Being such, uh, Vidyapati once had a dream of Lord Shiva. He describes the dream in detail in his book called Undki Rachna. Undki Rachna. He writes there, Nandi's giant bull eyes were red, intoxicated with energy. He was breathing fire from his nostrils. A huge golden bell was hanging around his neck. His hooves were digging the earth and covering the whole world in dust. Wow, what a dream. His horns were moving restlessly like that of a mad bull. He was controlled by the crown jewel of all Avadudas, Lord Shiva who was gracefully holding the reining rope of the bull in his one hand and a bugle horn in his other hand. A countless army of Bhutas, ghosts, and mystical yogis were standing behind him. He was playing the damru, a drum, and holding snakes while throwing ashes in the air. His associates were dancing wildly behind him. The whole scene was full of ecstasy and fury. Amongst all that wild play, the face of Lord Shushanta Shiva reflected the light of the crescent moon and his dreadlocks. His body was damp due to the constant flowing of the Ganges River from his topknot. His brow was compressed together like Cupid's bow. Decorated with sandalwood paste and ashes, his forehead was the residence of eternal peace and satisfaction. Smiling at me, that Prabhu, Ashutosh, Lord Shiva said, O oh, my son, Vidyapati, you are very, very dear to my heart. I am pleased by the sacrifices made by the family lineage of yours, as well as by your beautiful poems and prayers dedicated to me. Now I want to decorate your heart with the necklace of love for my Lord. In my dream I asked, My Lord, who is your Lord? Lord Shiva replied, My Lord is Krishna. Then I asked, And what is that love? My Lord Shiva replied, It is my boundless love for Radha and Krishna. As soon as Lord Shiva said Radha and Krishna's names, he started shivering and trembling in ecstasy and dancing wildly with his associates. Witnessing this beautiful condition of my Lord, I decided to sing the unlimited glories of love 
of Radha and Krishna in the most beautiful way, so that the Lord of my life, Shiva, would be pleased. I thought, if just the names of this divine couple made Lord Shiva feel this much joy and happiness, I should dedicate my life to sing about their pastimes and their glories to please my Lord Shiva in the best way. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So, uh, it, the scholars say after that dream, <coughs> Vidyapati started writing about the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. And because he was blessed to do so by Lord Shiva, as he described in the dream, no one opposed this sudden change in his poems from you know glorifying Lord Shiva to glorifying you know Krishna. Yet even more so, the scholars say, he wrote about Shimati Radharani. He wrote more about Radharani than Krishna. Which is why we can understand Lord Chaitanya was so interested to hear his poetry at the Gambira temple. Because as we know, one of the reasons that Lord Chaitanya appeared in this world was to try and understand Sri Radha's love for him. In Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 1.6, Kaviraj Goswami writes famously, desiring to understand the glory of Radharani's love, the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes through her love, and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love, the Supreme Lord Hari, richly endowed with her emotions, appeared from the womb of Srimati Sachi Devi as the moon appears from the ocean. <laughs> so although Vidyapati was a strict follower of Lord Shiva, he had no hesitation to compose poems about Sri Radha because his Istadeva, Lord Shiva, so much hankered for the loving glance of, of Sri Radha as seen in his epic Sri Radha Kripa Kataksha Bhavanam. This is a poem, you could say, or a song, or the hankering of the heart of Lord Shiva. It's found in the Urdhvam Naya Tantra. We can recite a few verses so we can see <laughs> how Lord Shiva uh, feels about Sh Sri Radha. <laughs> um, there Lord Shiva uh, says, O goddess worshipped by the kings of sages, O goddess who removes the sufferings of the three worlds, O goddess whose face is a, a blossoming lotus, O goddess who enjoys pastimes in the forest, O daughter of Brishabhanu, O companion of Braja's prince, when will you cast your merciful sidelong glance upon me? Lord Shiva. O goddess staying in a vine cottage by an Ashoka tree, O goddess whose delicate feet are as splendid as red blossoms, O goddess whose hand grants fearlessness, O abode of transcendental opulences, when will you cast your merciful sidelong glance upon me? O goddess who, playfully shooting the arrows of your glances from the curved bows of your auspicious amorous eyebrows, have completely subdued Nanda's son Krishna, when will you cast your merciful sidelong glance upon me? Now, uh, Hearing the, the poetry of Lord Shiva, we're again reminded of the maxim because it brings forth so many, what's beginning to awaken so many spiritual emotions, hopefully in our hearts. We're reminded of that maxim uh, from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Auntie Leela uh, 195, that we quoted last week. Kim kavyena kavestasya, kim kandena danushmata. Parasha hridaye lagnam na gur nayati yachitira. And I, I love this. What is the use of a bowman's arrow or a poet's poetry if they penetrate the heart but not cause the head to spin? Like, wow, that, I love that poetry, you'll say, because it, it brought memories, or it reminds me of Krishna and Radharani and the cowherd boys and Balaram. <laughs> Many scholars whose works I read in preparing this lecture today write that the important thing in Krishna conscious poetry is that, it, is that it should generate a feeling of wonder in the heart of the listener. It, it should generate a feeling of wonder in the heart of the listener. Like We call that not modern, modern day like a wow experience. But I prefer the scholar's way of saying it, generate a feeling of wonder in the heart of the listener. 
An example of this is a verse I found in the um, Vindavan Research Institute, written by a medieval poet named Rasalina. It's an interesting name, Rasalina. He writes, Ami hahala bada bade sweta shama rata nara jiyata bharata juki juki padata jihi chittavata ekabara. The translation is, and it's so beautiful, Prabhu. It's just so beautiful. Wonderful are Govinda's eyes, white as if filled with pristine heavenly nectar, black as if full of the deadliest of poison, and reddish as if filled with the most intoxicating wine. If he glances even once at someone, that person simultaneously lives due to the nectar, dies due to the poison, or stumbles around due to the intoxicating wine. Hare Krishna. The Acharyas say that the interesting thing about this particular poetic verse is that it uses all the colors found in Krishna's eyes and attributes various uh, qualities to them. Poetry. One Acharya concludes, in this way the magic is produced. In this way the magic is produced. Now, Another technique used in divine poetry to generate this feeling of wonder in the heart of the listener is called Anu Prasha. Anu Prasha. Shri Baladev Vidyabhushan defines Anu Prasha in his uh, Sahitya Komudi, uh, part 9, ver- verse 1. He says, A similarity of syllables in a poem or a verse is called uh, Anuprasha. If the different syllables are similar in a poem or verse and it brings forth some feeling of love for Krishna, that's called Anuprasha. Another definition of Anuprasha is given by uh, Kavi Karnapura and is Alankara Kashtuba 7 2. He writes, Anuprasya it yarte nuprasho varna samyata. Anuprasha is the literary ornament formed when similar sounding syllables are repeatedly anu and excellently pra arranged asha. Now, it's really interesting. I found that Sridhar Prabhupada also spoke once on the beauty of Anuprasha. That's why I'm including it, because Prabhupada spoke about it. During uh, a Sriman Bhagavatam class uh, on June 3rd, 1968, he was speaking from the verse uh, 10th canto, 14th chapter, text number 58. Now the verse, in part, because there's no need to quote the whole verse here, but the, the verse in part is, many of you will know, Bhavam buddhir vatsa padam param padam 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 yat vipanam natesham. We've heard that verse many times. And if you listen carefully, the syllables, padam, 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 they're, they're repeated. To, as, uh, for a purpose. So Srila Prabhupada said in that class, speaking on, on this Anuprasha, he said, this is very nice poetry, speaking about the verse, it is very nice poetry. Srimad Bhagavatam, in every verse, there is poetic genius. Now you see in this verse, Vatsa padam param padam 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 yat vipadam natesham. The padam padam, you see Anuprasha. <laughs> Anuprasha. What is it called in English? The same word repeated. Padam padam yat vipadam. You see, nicely made. Quoting directly, Sridhar Prabhupada. He spoke on this. Prabhupada was a poet. Now, Sridhar Rupa Goswami utilizes Anuprasha in his famous Chitta Kavya. Very beautiful composition I was reading the other day. Chitta Kavya. He utilizes this Anu Prasha by composing a verse that repeats um, only one consonant. Not a syllable this time, but a consonant. See if you can catch it. it, it I had to practice because this is, it's so intricate. But he repeats the consonant again and again and again. I think he'll catch it. Ni nun nano nanam nunam nanu non nanano nuni. Nane, nanam, ninun, 
Nanam, na noun, nana, nano, nanu. I did it. But listen to the, it's a very simple verse, but it's, the beauty of it is this repetition of these consonants. Did not the many-headed Lord Brahma, who impels the various demigods, offer prayers with tears streaming down his face, trying to pacify Lord Krishna, the killer of Shakatasura? Hare Krishna. So anyway, it's again transcendentally technical, but interesting nonetheless for even us less scholarly persons. Hare Krishna. So next week we will discuss the lives of Janti Das and uh, Jayadev Goswami, the two other original poets that really captured the attention and heart of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <coughs> um, but for today, we'll um, leave you with more poetry from really our favorite poet, Sridhar Prabhupada, because he's the one who, you know, is, is by his mercy, um, helping to awaken these um, feelings of love in Krishna consciousness. And um, I chose a favorite poem of Sridhar Prabhupada. Everyone devotee, most devotees know it from his Jala, Jala Dutta Diary, 1965. I won't read the, uh, the Sanskrit, but just the, the poem itself. And I'm sure you'll feel some deep emotions here. Papa wrote this on the Jaladuta. O brothers, I emphatically say to you, you will obtain your good fortune from the Supreme Lord Krishna only when Srimati Radharani becomes pleased with you. Sri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who is very dear to Lord Garanga, the son of Mother Sachi, is unparalleled in his service to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. He is that great saintly spiritual master who bestows intense devotion to Krishna at different places throughout the world. By a strong desire, the holy name of Lord Garanga will spread throughout all the countries of the Western world and all the cities, towns, and villages on the earth, from all the oceans, seas, rivers, and streams. Everyone will chant the holy name of Krishna. As the vast mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu conquers all directions. A flood of transcendental ecstasy will certainly cover the land. When all the sinful, miserable, living entities become happy, the Vaishnava's desire is then fulfilled. Although my Guru Maharaj ordered me to accomplish this mission, I'm not worthy or fit to do it. I'm very fallen and insignificant. Therefore, O Lord, now I am begging for your mercy so that I may become worthy for you are the wisest and most experienced of all. If you bestow your power by serving the spiritual master, one attains the absolute truth and one's life becomes successful. If that service is obtained, then one becomes happy and gets your association due to good fortune. My dear Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, because of my association with material desires one after another, I was gradually falling into a blind well full of snakes following the general populace. But your servant, Narada Muni, kindly accepted me as his disciple and instructed me how to achieve this transcendental position. Therefore, my first duty is to serve him. How could I ever leave his service? Prahlad Maharaj to Lord Nishringadev, Bhagavatam 7, 9, 28. O Lord Krishna, you are my eternal companion. Forgetting you, I have suffered the kicks of Maya, birth after birth. If today the chance to meet you occurs again, then I will surely be able to rejoin you. O dear friend, in your company I will experience great joy once again. In the early morning I will wander about the cower pastures and fields. Running and frolicking in the many forests of brudge, I will roll on the ground in spiritual ecstasy. O wind, Will that day be mine? Today that remembrance of you came to me in a very nice way. Because I have a great longing, I called to you. I am your eternal servant, and therefore I desire your association so much. O Lord Krishna, except for you, there is no other means of success. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhupada, our favorite poet. So Prabhu, that concludes our lectures and stimulation for ecstatic love based on, on poetry. 
And um, yeah, we'll be back again uh, next Friday. All glories to Sridhar Prabhupada, the revealer of the dawn. Shishi Gorni Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radhashama Sundar Ki, Brindavaneshwari, Shimati Radharani Ki, Mayapur Dham Ki, Gorni Tai Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagya Ki, Nitai Gaur Pimnandi, Jay Jay Sisi Radhe Shanti.